Like many guitar players out there, I love tube amps. They are generally my first choice when it comes to amplifying an electric guitar. I love the way they sound, the way they feel, and I love the differences between them. They are beautiful analog pieces of technology, but like a lot of old technology, they can have some drawbacks. And chief among those drawbacks for the home player is the volume. Depending on what type of amp you have, you're probably moving a lot of air. And if you live in a home with other people, like spouses, kids, neighbors, roommates, you may end up disturbing them and you may not be able to play your tube amp all the time. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you some great tricks and ways to tame your tube amp's output volume without destroying the tone. These are tried and true methods that I've used as well as thousands of other players have used over the years. And it's gonna make your spouse and your kids and your neighbors happy and allow you to play your beloved tube amps at all hours of the day. Now, before we jump into the video, be sure to check out the links in the description box down below for my video courses like Fretboard Fundamentals and the Tone Course. You can also find some affiliate links down there to some of the gear that we're gonna talk about in today's video. This video is not sponsored in any way by anybody, but if you end up buying something through some of those links down there, it ends up helping out the channel so that I can continue to make these videos and I really appreciate it. All right, with all that out of the way, let's jump in and take a look at our first trick for taming your tube amp. So the amp we're gonna use today is my Wonderland Overdrive from Amplified Nation. This is a 22 watt Dumble style amp. It's got two channels, a clean side, and an overdrive side that's based off of the Dumble Overdrive Special. This is gonna be a great amp to show the different techniques we're gonna use today. And the first one, we're actually gonna separate the head and the cab. Okay, so for our first method, we're gonna take the cabinet and we're actually gonna put it in a closet. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory, but there's a few different things to think about if you're gonna do this at home. Now, this is going to help when you close the doors to attenuate the sound or cut the volume. And at its most basic level, that's a pretty simple solution. I could sit in here with the cabinet, close the doors, and it's gonna knock the volume level down quite a bit for me just sitting here in the room. But it's also gonna completely change the tone and really not sound all that great. But if you have a basic recording setup, a microphone and an interface and a pair of headphones or a pair of monitors, you can mic up the cabinet in here and have a great practice tool as well as a great recording space. It's a great solution for guitar players that are recording a lot at home and want to be able to push their tube amps to where they're in the sweet spot, but they can't be in the same room with it. Now, if you're still having trouble with sound traveling through the house, you're going to want to decouple the amp from the floor. Basically, that means put something underneath the cabinet or the combo to get it up off of the floor so that the resonance, the vibrations coming from the cabinet don't transfer through the floor. Especially in a room like this where I'm on the second level, there's bedrooms underneath me and all around me. This amp is gonna transfer a lot of sound through the floor and throughout the whole house. So get something that will support the weight of your amp, but will absorb the vibrations to decouple it from the floor of the closet. Also, if you're putting this in a closet where there's a lot of clothes or coats or bedding or whatever, that's gonna help to absorb a lot of the sound and it's gonna give you a much drier space to record it. So the microphone's not gonna pick up nearly as much room ambience as it would if I was recording in a space like this. And for a lot of players, this can be the perfect solution. If you have a basic setup to record and mic up an amp already, you don't have to go out and buy a different piece of gear like an attenuator or a load box. You can just simply move your cabinet into the closet, get it mic'd up in a good position and you're off to the races. Now I should point out that if I were gonna use this setup long-term here in this space, this is exactly how I would do it. This closet here runs the length of this entire wall. So I would take this cabinet and I would put it all the way in this back corner facing this way. 
obviously would move the guitar rack. And I would decouple it from the floor, probably put something behind it to help absorb the sound, and I would mic it up this way. Because these doors are vented and not actually solid, it's not gonna cut down the sound all that much, but it would help out substantially in this room. So for the next method, we're actually gonna utilize the effects loop on the amplifier to tame its overall volume. Now, if you're not familiar with an effects loop and what it does, I actually made a video on effects loops a few years ago, which you can check out here. But essentially, an effects loop is an insert point in the amp's circuitry between the preamp section and the power amp section. Typically, they're used for time-based effects like reverbs and delays, but you can also insert other things in the effects loop to tame the volume, like a volume pedal, for example. Putting a volume pedal in the effects loop is a really great way of just literally turning the amp's volume down. This is great for amps that might not have a master volume circuit, uh, or if they do, it kind of drastically changes the tone of the amp. But instead of a volume pedal, today I'm actually gonna put an EQ pedal in the loop. This is gonna give me a few different options. I can use the output control on this EQ pedal like a volume pedal would work, literally turning down the volume of the amp, but I can also utilize the EQ to reshape the tone of the amplifier. So for instance, if your amp changes tone while the volume's going down, you can use the EQ to dial in that tone that might have changed or is missing. Plus you can use the EQ to completely revoice the amp. This is an incredibly useful tool and putting it in the effects loop is a really popular way of getting completely different sounds out of your amp as well as attenuating it. So the next method of taming your amp or attenuating your amp for home use is to actually use an attenuator. Now this is a tried and true method that guitar players have been using for decades. And if you don't know, an attenuator is a piece of gear that goes in between the actual amplifier and the speaker. You insert it in line between the amp and the speaker cabinet. And it essentially takes some of the voltage, some of the electrical signal coming off of the output transformer on your amp and converts some of it to heat energy. And that brings the overall volume going to the speaker down. It's literally just turning the amp's volume down. Now, like I said, attenuators have been around for decades. This one is my favorite though. This is the Iron Man 2 Mini from Tone King. I purchased this one several years ago. This is not sponsored in any way, but this is what's called a reactive load attenuator, which means that it's mimicking the way a speaker responds and works under load from a tube amp. Some attenuators that you'll see on the market are what's called a fixed load, and they work fine and they sound okay, but fixed load attenuators can sort of suck a lot of the feel and the response of your tube amp out. That's because they're not actually working like a speaker does. A reactive load, however, is working electronically with the amp to maintain the feel and the response of your amp unattenuated. This one also has a handy solo boost function, which is really cool if you want that. I can't recommend these enough. If you are a tube amp player and you have several tube amps around your home or you're gigging with tube amps, I would highly recommend picking up an attenuator because you're gonna find yourself using it a lot. Another nice feature about this particular one is it actually has a line out on the back here, which you could use to drive a speaker simulator or you could send directly into your DAW, into your interface and record the direct line out signal of your amp. Uh, to use with impulse responses or uh, a speaker simulator, something like that. So I'm gonna patch in the attenuator here and we're gonna show you how it works. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the last thing we're gonna look at today, I think is probably the best solution out there nowadays. And this is part of why I'm always saying that there's never been a better time to be a guitar player. Nowadays, we have things like the Captor X or the Aux from Universal Audio or the Sur Reactive Load. Boxes that your amp plugs into that allow you to play silently with no cabinet at all and allows you to load up virtual cabinet and mic combinations. Now, this is the most expensive solution we're gonna look at in today's video, but this is by far the best. If you're gonna be at home playing a lot or recording a lot and you want a lot of options in terms of cabinet modeling, in terms of mic selection, things like the Captor X or the Aux, I think are the way to go. They have built-in attenuators. They are reactive load like the attenuator we just looked at, but this gives you so many options in terms of tones and setups and things that you wouldn't be able to have on your own. These are also great for gigging. If you wanna tame the output of your amp and not have to worry about miking an amp on stage, you can send basically the DI signal out of this to the front of house. I really think boxes like this are the future. And in fact, if you've been watching my channel at all over the last six months or so, you haven't actually heard any real cabinets mic'd up in the room. All of the guitar sounds that you hear when I'm using my tube amps are through the Captor X. Now, I should point out, Two Notes did send this to me uh, when it first came out a little over a year and a half or two years ago, but this isn't sponsored by them. But I really do love this thing. I use it every single day. I can plug any amp into it and I can have any kind of cabinet sound, any kind of mic sound that I would ever want right here, ready to go. Plus it has some built-in effects. It has EQ, it has reverb. This I think is the best solution out there. And you don't even have to have a computer with an interface with it. You can plug headphones straight into the front of it and play silently whenever you want. my favorite ways of taming your tube amp for home use. Let me know if there's a method that you like to use that I didn't cover in this video in the description box down below. Once again, if you want more information on any of the gear that I use in today's video, or you wanna check out any of my video courses, those are all linked down below in the description box. You can also subscribe down there, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Rhett Scholl. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and remember there is no plan B.